guys and welcome back to my channel. So today's video I'm going to be cleaning up a few fossils I found recently and by recently I mean really recently hence why I've caught the sun a little bit so uh especially on one side. I feel like this side's fine and then this side I'm just slightly red but it'll go down. Anyway nonetheless I got these fossils from quite a muddy site so they're in need of just washing basically and I found a lot of fossils but I wanted to really showcase the ones that don't need much gluing back together or cleaning up with like a hammer and that sort of thing. These ones, they're literally just got a bit of mud on them. So um, they look like this when I found them. So one side's a lot cleaner than the other, but you can see there's just a lot of excess mud all over it. And when I found these, it was really sunny. So the mud is all dry. So it should just, when I pop it in, you know, a nice little bucket to soak, should just come off quite nicely. We will hope. And then the other one I want to clean is a Nautilus. So it just looks like this before cleaning it. So you can see the shape of it um, and hopefully a bit more detail will be revealed when all this muddy layer on top flakes off. So that's going in the bucket as well. And then there's two more I thought I would show you guys. Um, another Harposerus one, Harposerus one, Harposerus ammonite. Um, which is lovely and big this one. I'm just <laughs> loads of mud is flaking off already and just falling on my floor So I'm gonna have to hoover but um, it just looks like this and it's quite hefty this one So the back of it has a lot of um, Excess rock on it, but the front this is sort of the side I'm gonna just keep it as so this one doesn't need too much cleaning up this one should just you know soak off really nice and be good to go on display and then the last one is just a smaller Harposerus ammonite. I did find other ammonites, but they're all in they're all in need of a bit more than a soak So I'll show you the process of those ones in another video But uh, this one just looks like this so you can see the mud in the grooves there So they really need a soak now the soaking process all you need is I just use a sort of like kitchen sink tub or whatever they're called and I've just filled it with normal lukewarm sort of water um i don't put much soap with them people might use brushes that sort of thing but with mud just on the fossils i literally just soak them and pull up them in and uh, the water does the work for me and then i just using a towel um i just yeah clean it off basically um i'll film what's just happened when i put the first one in so you can literally see all the mud lift off so um yeah hope you guys enjoy so I've just put the first ammonite in and you can see all the mud that's already just come away of it so instantly it's already a lot cleaner than it was and you know give it 30 minutes in there the water should do a lot more I'm just going to put the nautilus in now or nautiloid which is quite muddy so we'll see what it does and as you can see it just all falls off the initial layer anyway and then more will come off as we go. I don't know if this bucket's going to be big enough for these big ones. I'll move this up there. Oh god, look how much mud is coming off. It's a very muddy site. Like these, I could have, you know, brushed these before I put them in the water, and I think quite a lot of mud would have come off dry. But you can't be soaking it. Yeah, so I'm not going to be able to get the other one in just yet. So I'll put that in with the next lot. So you can literally see how much mud there is surrounding these fossils because you now can't see anything so um yeah a brush is quite useful if they're really really muddy but i just let them soak um, and then using my hands i'll um, brush off any that isn't coming off just naturally um, and then dry them with an old towel and well you'll see the results <laughs> i do have a new microphone so i hope you can pick up the sound of the water doing the job but it's making like a little like crackling noise where it's going into all the little porous places on the rock I think but that's all fine just cleaning them up nicely you can already see the fossils so much better than before like look at that oh amazing this is in fact my first time cleaning the fossils from this site so I'm quite intrigued to see what they look like when all the mud is off them but I think they're going to be really beautiful like this one's already looking so much nicer see oh look at the change in color like of the nautilus that was completely white before i put it in amazing let's see if i can find the little one 
Da -da. Oh wow, that is such a change, like nearly all the mud is off that. So a few more minutes in there and they should be good to dry. And then I'll do this one off camera and then I'll show you the finished results. So this batch of fossils that I've just soaked are now ready to be removed and towel dried. So I've just got my old towel here that I'm folding a few times so that basically the water doesn't ruin my wooden desk. Um, so I just lay that there and then I'll start with the nautiloid. So it already looks so much better. Um, I'll just sprinkle some water on and it might be worth rinsing them in clean water before you like fully display them or like say you're finished with cleaning them up just to avoid the muddy water from like the water in this bucket is not clear right now so it's not quite as clean as it could be. So I'm just going to shake off the excess before I show you guys. So it looks so much better than it did. I'm very chuffed with that. I, I haven't found many nautiloids before actually. And this one, there we go. This one's a special, it's got quite a lot of character. I like the, like you can see all the chambers and the colors on it. It's quite nice. It's quite big actually. I found really weird ones from the same site actually, which I'll show in another video where they're, they're sort of distorted because when they uh, when they died and floated down the water column, they weren't cemented or their you know the little cavities in between their chambers weren't filled like fully. So when they actually got lithified, they got crushed because they weren't fully uh, filled. So that's why those ones look so weird. But this one's actually very nice and whole. So there's it dry. It looks a lot more matte now, <laughs> but still gorgeous so I will clean this again just under clean water just give it another rinse and then take a proper look at the specimen and decide if there's any more I want to do um, such as flaking off this chunk here um, so that it's completely revealed but I do love it just leaving them how how I find them if they're good enough but I might just flake off the middle bit so you can see the whole whole shell um, so the next one I'll pull out is the big one Let's just give it a rinse. It's quite therapeutic doing this, I find. Especially when they look like this. It was a very good fossil trip. <laughs> I found some brilliant ones. So just try and get the excess out. So, voila, look at that. <laughs> That is amazing. And I think it, it's so nice seeing the colour change from, you know, dusty white from all the mud dried on it to, you know, actually having some more colour to it. So just going to dry the middle bit. And this is a gorgeous specimen, this one, because the whole inner bit's there, which is just so nice. Doo -doo. And even the back of this specimen's lovely, like if I really wanted to I could clean up. So that's the front part which is beautiful and you can see right into it. But also the back, you can see all the ribbing around the edge here, so if I wanted to flake this bit off I'm sure it would be lovely underneath as well. So um, yeah, that's that one. So gorgeous. And I'm going to have to buy little stands for them so they can sit up on on display um, I think plate stands are really good but uh, when I get around to actually ordering I'll order like a few options um, and then I'll make a video on that so I can tell you guys the best and then last but certainly not least we've got the little harposerus which has turned out beautifully as well oh I just covered myself in dirty water and I'll just dry it so it doesn't drip all over me and there we have the little one. So again, beautiful, all the inner whorls are there and the ribbing just looks so perfect. And that's the back of it. So with this one again, this is the side I'll show and I'll you know, put it on display like this. But I just love the detail that by removing the mud, you can see so much more of it. So perfect, love it. So whilst I dry this one, I'm gonna pop the big, oh, I'll pop the big one in a minute because I will actually show you guys. I'll get a clean bucket of water because it's so much fun watching it go in for the first time and just all that mud just dropping off. <laughs> so I'll just dab this one dry. Um, but they, they've turned out beautiful, like, look. 
I can't, this one is one of my favorites. This and the next one I need to clean up. Um, I don't know if it's focusing, focus. Like it's so pretty. And it's big, like this is probably one of the most complete big Harposterous Ammonites I've found. Like I've found lots of bits of big whirls before, but uh, never a complete one like this. This is, this is pretty impressive. So um, yeah, right, I'll go get a clean bucket and then show you guys the next one. Before I drop the big one into the water, I just thought I'd mention about getting rid of the old water. Don't put it down your sink. That is a recipe for disaster. Um, if you have a garden, just pour it outside there because it is full of mud when these are washed. So you don't wanna be clogging up your sink. But uh, let's put the big one in. Look at that. That is a dirty ammonite. So I'm going to let this one soak for a little bit and see how much comes off of one ammonite but I, get, I think it's going to be quite a lot because if you look in the inner worlds there's a lot of a lot of mud in these little gaps here so I want that to all lift which by the look of it it's lifting very easily so um, yeah I'll be back when this one's ready. So I can still hear it fizzing away but I think we're nearing finishing because the water is completely murky like this is going to they really, I don't think you guys, I'm not going to do that. That'll just tip all the dirty water everywhere. So we're going to avoid that. But these cute little guys are all clean and dry, which is amazing. And then this one is very nearly ready. I can tell. I'm just going to give it a quick little, you know, once over with my hands and make sure all the mud's off it because it's, it's a big one. So it was quite muddy. I'm going to flip it round and let it work its magic on the back of it a little bit because there's quite a chunk of rock on the back of this one so I just want to make sure that's all clean and all the little grooves before I dry it so wow it looks amazing amazing I'm gonna get some little brushes I think especially for the big ones just cleaning inside the inner whirls I think will be done a lot better with a little brush um, but most of the mud has lifted out anyway, but for future specimens it might not be so easy, so yeah, I think a, a little brush will be a good investment. There is so much mud. <laughs> like the base of this, the base of this bucket is, it feels like a beach loaded with sand. Um, so that's going to need to definitely go in the garden. Okay, I think we're we're there. Just gonna splash it a few times. And voila. We'll just let this one drip for a minute. God, it's heavy. This is the thing, you don't need to go to the gym, you just need a fossil hunt. Like the amount of weight I can carry on my back now from hunting fossils is impressive. Like, don't gym, just fossil hunt. <laughs> I think that's my new motto. motto. Right. Let's just dab some of the edges so it doesn't drip all over me. Four. And there you have it. The big one is clean. So just look at how much detail has been revealed. Like you couldn't see any of that when it was all muddy and dusty. That has turned out beautiful. And it, the middle of it isn't all there, but enough of it's there to get the effect and it's, it's just gorgeous. And then the back of it, you can see all the ribbing on the back at the top and then you've got the chunk of rock here but I think that's just perfect. Like that will just sit so perfectly in a stand like that. Oh, <laughs> isn't it amazing? So I have so many of these Harposterous Ammonites from this site because it's where I'm doing my dissertation. Um, so it gives me an excuse to literally collect as many as I want because I'm talking about how the species varies. So. The more specimens you have, the merrier, but it never gets old looking at the specimens, especially when they're as beautiful as this. Like, how perfect is that? Amazing, absolutely amazing. Well, thank you so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed this video, um, do let me know because I'll be happy to film more of these. I've got lots of samples and specimens from this site, actually, um, all in need of washing and cleaning, and I would be very happy to film the reveal process because it gets it's so exciting for me every single time I do it um, so if you guys enjoy that I'll be happy to do that but um 
yeah thank you so much for watching please like and subscribe if you enjoyed um and yeah hopefully i'll see you again next time i'll link my social media in the description box i do have an instagram where i post pictures of things i find and me in the field actually hunting them so that might be quite fun and let me know in the comments if there's anything you'd really want to see me um make on my channel maybe i can if you don't really know what ammonites are i can talk about you know the creatures that once lived and all of that sort of thing so let me know if you have any video ideas otherwise i'll just keep doing what i'm doing so thank you so much for watching and i really do hope you enjoyed